Finally, we're back in the streets of Cyberpunk 2077 as there's a brand new DLC that was released, Phantom Liberty, and before that, Cyberpunk 2.0, a massive update to the game, bringing performance improvements and tons of other changes. If you're like me, this is the first time you're playing in quite some time. And of course, the game has changed a ton since its original release in 2020. So without further ado, this video will show you how to optimize Cyberpunk 2077 for the best possible performance while keeping the game looking as good as possible. This video is not going to jump into Windows optimization at all, so instead in the description down below you'll find a Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more performance out of your PC. This one's only going to focus on in-game options. Now, of course, Hardware and Boxed did do a full, seriously in-depth breakdown of what each option does as well as each effect on the game. It's a super well-made video, so instead of going into each of these options, I'll give you a quick rundown of what you should change and what you should focus on in the in-game options for Cyberpunk. I'll pause the game, head into settings, and we'll start on the graphics tab. So at the very top, we have a quick preset. There are a few presets that we can pick from, low, medium, high, ultra, steam deck, then ray tracing, low, medium, ultra, and overdrive. Overdrive is very intensive, and you'll probably not be using this at all in gameplay, or at least you shouldn't be, as it's gonna absolutely tank your FPS. It's only ready to show off what can be done in game. Running a 3080 Ti at 2K, I've now dropped to 20 FPS, cranking it all the way up to overdrive, but this is as good as the game will look pretty much ever. It's completely overkill hardware with a completely overkill rendering system, and of course we won't be playing on this for a few years to come. This is purely just for a tech preview. At lower resolutions this may be more feasible, but 2K 30 FPS is somewhat maybe playable. Anyways, the best options here are definitely not going to be any of the ray tracing options, otherwise you're going to tank your FPS with pretty much whatever you have set. I'll wait a few seconds for everything to load. Ray tracing on low, we're getting a solid 60 FPS, which isn't terrible, and the game does look really good. If you're happy playing at a cinematic, somewhat, or console FPS of 60 or 30 FPS, then you can choose the ray tracing options as the game will look absolutely fantastic. But for everyone who wants more than playable FPS rates, you'll definitely want to choose none of the ray tracing options and instead one of these normal options here that don't use ray tracing technology pretty much at all. The best option that you could pick is Steam Deck surprisingly as it's designed to run on mobile hardware. You're going to get tons of performance while keeping the game looking really as good as possible. I went up to 95-ish FPS, probably 100 and the game looks really good actually. It is optimized for a Steam Deck, but of course running on all hardware, it gives us around medium options with everything looking pretty good. Steam Deck sits somewhere between medium and high, and it's probably the best option you could choose, at least to start from, and work your way up or down from. DLSS is a good option. If you'd like to render the game at a smaller resolution and crank up the quality using AI, of course you can choose to use either DLSS or AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution or Intel XE Super Sampling. These all do the same things and have very similar settings. We can adjust essentially how performant this option is, which means that it renders at a smaller size and uses AI magic in order to crank up everything. Ultra performance, you'll notice a huge gain in FPS, but of course some weird artifacts, especially with fast moving objects, etc, etc. Quality or balanced is what you're going to have any of these options set to, whether it's DLSS that you choose on balanced, for example, or instead AMD FSR on balanced, or of course Intel XE Super Sampling, which I think is working here, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think you need specifically an Intel graphics card for this to work, but you probably do. What you'll most likely be using is the Fidelity FX Super Resolution option, as it's pretty much the best of the bunch when it comes to visual quality. You may get more performance from DLSS on NVIDIA graphics cards, and of course you definitely will if you have this enabled with DLSS frame generation, but unfortunately this requires a new 40 series RDX graphics card, which I don't have access to. If you have a 40 series NVIDIA graphics card or above in the future, you'll definitely want to use DLSS and DLSS frame generation up here. 
DLIA is also a cool option to have. It uses AI as anti-aliasing and of course can make the image look a heck of a lot better. You can only use this when you're using NVIDIA DLSS. So I'll skip over this. Resolution scaling, it's pretty much the same. We can use dynamic scaling if you wouldn't like to use any of these upscaling options. Or of course you can enable it and it'll automatically adjust the image to reach a target frame per second, minimum and maximum. Usually, however, you'll just set one of these options to quality and leave it. I'll be doing this with AMD Fidelity FX FSR2 here. Scrolling down further to basic, we have field of view. Obviously, this will affect your performance somewhat, but you really want to set this to whatever your personal preference is. It's much more important to have a good experience than good FPS. Film grain and chromatic aberration are both your preference and shouldn't really have any performance impact. Having film grain enabled can, of course, result in higher recording quality and higher file size with certain options. There's more going on on your screen, so it may push some encoders to work a bit harder, improve quality, but of course may also raise file size. Chromatic aberration is your preference. It's that red-blue split around objects. Depth of field, once again your preference. Personally, I have this off in pretty much all games as it helps improve visibility quite a lot. As for lens flare down here, this is how light blurs when you look at bright objects. It's an immersive or cinematic option and you should basically leave this on all the time for the best looking gameplay experience. Then motion blur. We have high, low, and off. This has pretty much no performance impact at all, and it really just depends on your preference. If you're running with lower FPS, having this enabled can help smooth out hitches and stuttering, at least visually. However, if you're getting a solid number of FPS, you can turn this off completely, and the game may look quite a bit cleaner, especially when you look around quickly in certain scenarios. Of course, you may like the motion blur look, in which case, feel free to leave it on. And now, down to advanced. There's a ton of options here, so I'll run through these pretty much as quickly as possible. Contact shadows will give you around 3% performance difference when it's off versus on, but it does add quite a bit of depth and realism to the image, and I'd recommend having this option turned on if you have the FPS to handle it. Improved facial lighting geometry comes with practically no performance impact, and of course, no impact in quality. You can leave this option on and forget about it. Anisotropic filtering, we have 16, 8, 4, and 1. You'll notice a performance improvement having this set to 1, but of only 2 or 3%. There's a very small FPS difference, but there is quite a large quality difference when it comes to textures, especially further away from you. I'd highly recommend leaving this all the way up on 16, as it has practically no performance impact. Then local shadow mesh quality. It's very difficult to see the quality difference between these when it comes to high and medium. If you set it to low, you'll notice a quality decrease in shadows, but you won't really gain any FPS at all. Leave this option at medium. Local shadow quality. Having this set to off removes practically all of the shadows and makes the game look really weird. If you have this set to low or medium, you'll lose a few FPS, but it makes the game look a ton better. Having this set up to high shouldn't really gain you any extra quality on top of medium, except for maybe costing a few FPS. Then, cascaded shadows range. If you have this set to low, the game can look a little bit worse, especially when it comes to distant shadows, and it's only really recommended to lower this if you're struggling with FPS, otherwise leave this set to medium. Cascaded shadows resolution, once again, low and medium have practically the same performance, medium just looks a bit better, but low does look a lot worse. Distant shadows resolution has almost no visual impact, and of course no performance impact either, you can leave this at high and forget about it. Then volumetric fog resolution, this has practically no difference in gameplay play, but you can gain 8 FPS from low compared to ultra. It's definitely worthwhile having this set to low or even medium as low can result in a few weird visual artifacts in foggy areas. Volumetric cloud quality is a bit of a weird one. If you have this set to off, all of the clouds disappear. Anything above that, you'll have clouds, but they really don't have a performance impact in most gameplay. As simply put, you're not going to be looking up at the sky all the time. Though, if you do and you find that you drop a ton of FPS, lower this down to medium. I wouldn't recommend turning this off at all. Then max dynamic decals. On a computer with a CPU that isn't completely garbage, you'll definitely be able to have this cranked pretty much all the way up to ultra as an even super busy scenes with tons of bullet holes and things like that, you're really not going to drop any FPS if you have a somewhat powerful CPU. If you're really CPU limited, you can consider lowering this, but they shouldn't be too much of a performance impact anyway. Screen space reflections, we have options from all the way down off 
low, medium, high, ultra, and up to psycho, where I'm pretty sure things get ray traced. There's almost no reason to have this pushed all the way up to psycho. Ultra should be your highest, but when it comes to performance and looks, medium is gonna be your best option here. You'll gain about five to 10% by dropping it down to low, but the quality gain from medium when it comes to visuals is definitely worthwhile. If you're really struggling for FPS, lower this down to medium, but I definitely wouldn't recommend setting this to off as it makes the game just look that much worse. Subsurface scattering quality, there's practically no difference at all, so you can leave it wherever you want. Then ambient occlusion. If you drop this from high to low, you'll gain maybe 1% when it comes to FPS, but turning this off, you'll lose a ton of visual quality and gain around 10% FPS, which is definitely worthwhile if you're really strapped for frames. Otherwise, just leave this on high and forget about it. Color precision, practically no difference. Medium is a little bit faster, so you can set it to that. Then mirror quality, you're not gonna be looking in mirrors all the time. Medium is a good place to leave this. You'll gain about 20% FPS when in mirrors compared to high, and the same goes between medium and low. If you need more FPS when customizing your character, etc., drop this down to low. Level of detail has practically no impact in performance and visuals. You can comfortably leave this on high. Crowd density, if you're not crazily CPU limited, raise this up to high as the game gets much more alive and immersive. You won't really drop a ton of FPS, if not any at all. It really depends on how CPU limited you are. If you have a powerful CPU, crank it up and forget about it. Finally, ray tracing. If you turn this on, you'll have a ton of extra options here. If you enable it at all, you're probably gonna drop a ton of FPS. This is more just for looks. If you do choose to enable ray tracing, the first thing you should look at is reflections, as it is gonna make reflections look that much crispier and is probably gonna be the only option you really want to enable here. As it comes to shadows, there's not too much of a difference except for performance. Lighting, there is a little bit of a difference between medium, ultra, and psycho, but when you turn it off, it looks like pretty much a completely different game. If you enable this and walk around, then disable it and walk around the same area, it looks like it's styled differently. If you're a fan of how the ray traced light system looks, then you can use it, otherwise have it disabled and you won't know what you're missing out on. Path tracing is just a technology preview and you should probably not have this enabled at all, but it practically ray traces everything that you see and the same goes for photo mode over here which only uses it when you're taking photos or screenshots in game. You'll need at least 8 gigabytes of VRAM in order to use either of these options here, so unless you have 8 gigs of VRAM and an RTX graphics card that supports ray tracing at all, then it's probably not worthwhile coming to the section at all. As for AMD cards and things like that that support ray tracing, there's definitely a performance difference between NVIDIA and AMD and the rest. NVIDIA has the edge when it comes to ray tracing, but anyways, that's really it for this section here. Personally, I'd have ray tracing disabled completely, and if I really wanted to sacrifice a few FPS for a better looking game, it'll definitely be reflections that I enable and nothing else. And with that, we've pretty much run through all the options here. Basically, it's the Steam Deck preset with a few of these raised and some of them lowered. If we head back into the game itself, you'll see that I'm sitting at a comfortable 90 FPS, though I am at 2K. If I drop down to 1080p, I'd probably be getting 120, 130 FPS, which is really, really good actually. 93 solid FPS without optimized options. I can, however, push it to the Steam Deck option, wait for things to equalize, and essentially we just dropped a few of the quality options, making it look a little bit worse, and we're sending it around the same FPS anyway. So we gain a little bit of quality by following this very simple optimization guide. And of course, if you want to see more in-depth details about how the game works, I'd highly recommend checking out Hardware and Boxed video, where they go through all of these options in super deep detail when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077 2.0. Anyways, that's about it for this quick video. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.